أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد الأمين الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام الحمد لله على نعمة الإيمان الحمد لله على نعمة القرآن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق صلوا على رسولنا محمد صلوا على قرة أعيننا محمد اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد بعدد كل داء ودواء وبارك وسلم عليه وعليهم كثيرا اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد كلما اختلف الملوان وتعاقب العصران وكرر الجديدان واستقبل الفرقدان وبلغ روحه وارواح أهل بيته من التحية والسلام أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وفوض أمري إلى الله إن الله بصير بالعباد وما توفيقي ولا اعتصامي إلا بالله عليه توكلت وعليه فليتوكل المتوكلون ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى صلاة اللهم بارك على رسولنا محمد حتى لا تبقى بركة اللهم ارحم رسولنا محمدا حتى لا تبقى رحمة اللهم سلم على رسولنا محمد حتى لا يبقى سلام اللهم صل على رسولنا محمد وعلى آل رسولنا ونبينا محمد كلما ذكره الذاكرون وكلما سهى عنه الغافلون اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن سهلا إذا شئت اللهم عملنا بما أنت أهله ولا تعاملنا بما نحن أهله اللهم اجعل هذا العمل خالصا لوجهك الكريم اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذ من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين واكتب الصحة والسلامة والعفة والعافية علينا وعلى الحجاج والغزاة والمسافرين في برك وبحرك من أمة محمد أجمعين اللهم أخلصنا بخالصة ذكر الدار وجعلنا عندك لمن المصطفين الأخيار اللهم أخلصني بخالصة ذكر الدار وجعلني عندك لمن المصطفين الأخيار رب زدني علما وألحقني بالصالحين رب زدنا علما وألحقنا بالصالحين ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم رب إني لا أحصي ثناء عليك فأنت كما أثنيت على نفسك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بك يا رب العالمين وذكر فإن الذكرى تنفع المؤمنين وذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث
Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ulaike allazina ishtarawu al-hayatad dunya bil ahira. Fala yukhaffafu anhum al-azabu wa la hum yunsarun. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَقَفَّيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ وَآتَيْنَا عِيسَى ابْنَ مَرْيَمَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَى أَنفُسُكُمُ اسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ وَقَالُوا قُلُوبُنَا غُلْفُ بَلْ لَعْنَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِكُفْرِهِمْ فَقَلِيلًا مَا يُؤْمِنُونَ صدق الله العظيم The Sarayat from Surah Al-Baqarah beginning with the ayah number 86 until the ayah number 88. In the ayah number 86 Allah the Almighty states that أولئك الذين اشتروا الحياة الدنيا بالآخرة Those are the ones who bought the life of this world in exchange for the hereafter. الحياه الدنيا بالاخره they used the akhirah or the chance of being there in paradise as money in order to buy the life of this world so they they give up from that idea from the promise of Allah from being in paradise by the mercy of Allah azza wa jal hoping that reward of Allah they denied that reality or actually they give up they gave up so they turned their face into this life they put their importance to this life they trusted upon this life they relied upon it they loved it more than anything else, especially the hereafter and the promise of Allah So they give up from anything which may lead them to paradise and to the promise of Allah They give up from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the book of Allah, from the signs of Allah which was surrounding them in their life especially them, themselves as ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the signs of Allah azza wa jal. they give up from anything so they turn their face into this life and they preferred it over anything else they are the ones who preferred the life of this world Allah azza wa jal says in another ayah وَاتْلَ عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانُ فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ And recite to them our slave, the example of our slave whom we have given our ayat, our signs. He recognized them. He was fully aware about the ayat, the signs of Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah made him uh, understanding it أَتَيْنَاهُ ayatina. we gave him our clear proof our clear ayat فَانْسَلَخَ minha. but he withdrew himself from the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he turned himself away he kept himself uh, away from the ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَانْسَلَخَ مِنْهَا فَأَتْبَعَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ then the Satan followed him فَكَانَ مِنَ الْغَاوِينَ and eventually he became one of the losers so these people among all humanity they are the most 
massive people, they all prefer this life. They love it. As Allah says, وَلَكِنَّهُ أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَا He turned his face into this life as if he will find his eternal desires in this earth. أَخْلَدَ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ وَاتَّبَعَ هَوَا And followed his desires. But actually, in fact, this life and this earth will not suffice his uh, desires, will not suffice his, his unlimited desires. These desires can only be, can only be suffice, suffice by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. Allah and the life of the hereafter, I mean, the paradise there only the human being can feel himself happy and can him feel himself uh, in uh, tranquility and that uh, whatever he need will be fulfilled just there but in this life it's impossible because here we live just a period of time a limited time and what, no matter how we gather from this life, we shall uh, abandon them all here and then return to our Creator. And even if we live here eternally, whatever we gather will not be able uh, uh, to suffice us, will not uh, give us that sufficient sufficiency because it's just meta, use it, and then after a while, you will be, uh, you will dislike it. But in the paradise, in the, as Allah promised us, there will not be something like that. They will not uh, feel something like that in paradise. They will not dislike anything after using it. They will feel endless happiness there as they said لا يمسنا فيها نصب ولا يمسنا فيها لهوب no tired we, we, uh, tiredness touch us here لا يمسنا فيها نصب ولا يمسنا فيها لهوب لهوب means you dislike something after a while they will not dislike anything they will continue liking the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Allah said, Allah will change uh, the blessings every time and will surprise uh, for them uh, because there is not any limitation in the, create, uh, in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here we are with some people who turned away from that promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and give up from that idea now they do not desire anymore the paradise of Allah azza wa jal or as a matter in fact they do not think about it they just they are now very busy with uh, this life radu bil hayat al dunya wa tma'annu biha wal ladina hum an ayatina ghafilin they are, they liked this life and they are very busy with it. So they deny our ayat, they deny our signs as Allah described them. And you may remember the ayah number 85 where Allah said about Jews because here in the ayah number 86 Allah starts this ayah, Ula'ika, those are and who are they? They are the Jews where they denied a part, some part of the book, of the scripture of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and accepted another part. Therefore Allah blamed them saying, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ 
wa takfuruna bi ba'd do you believe in some part of the book while denying the other fama jazaa'u man yaf'alu dhalika minkum illa khizyun fi al-hayati ad-dunya what is the recompense of someone who does this among you except disgrace in this worldly life illa khizyun fi al-hayati ad-dunya and wa yawm al-qiyamah and plus in the hereafter يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ They will be sent back to the swearest punishment. Look at this ayah. To the swearest punishment. They are believing in some of the book, in some part of the book while denying the other. But Allah sending them back in the hereafter to the swearest punishment. And this punishment is swears than those who denied the book totally because uh, it's more worse to believe in the book in, to uh, some part of the book and denying the other this case is worse than believing uh, denying the book totally this is in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore he said وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ they will send back to the swearest punishment إلى أشد العذاب and here in this life فما جزاء من يفعل ذلك منكم إلا خزن في الحياة الدنيا the punishment for them in this life is disgrace while the deniers they may live better than a life better than this so believing in some part of the book and denying the other this, uh, this is as if you try to trick Allah, the Almighty. This is hypocrisy. This is some kind of uh, hypocrisy. And as Allah promised for them, in الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ They will be in uh, the bottom uh, of uh, Jahannam, of the hellfire. No one shall be under them. They are they will be in the swearest punishment of the hereafter because they tried to uh, trick Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while believing in some part of the book and denying the other here we are speaking about them and we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being like them they are those who bought who have bought the life of this world in exchange for the hereafter and you may remember in the first ayat of first signs verses of surat al-baqarah at the second page of quran at the ayah number five from this chapter allah said no, it's not at the ayah number 5. It's at the third chapter of this, of Quran, and ayah number 16, where Allah said, They are those who have bought the misguidance, dalala, astray, bilhuda, in exchange for the guidance. فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُهُمْ So their shopping, uh, they didn't earn anything from that shopping. It was not profitable shopping for them. فَمَا رَبِحَتْ تِجَارَتُهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا مُهْتَدِينَ And they, uh, they were not on guidance. It's not a guidance. And this ayah also, the ayah number 16, was speaking about the hypocrites. So the hypocrites, they live in Muslim society, in believer society, and apparently they are believers, but within themselves they do not submit to the creator of the heavens and earth. They do not, submitting to him means believing in, uh, in his ayat totally, uh, and not denying any of them 
so they they didn't submit to the creator they didn't read his ayat and understand it and realize it and convince themselves with the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after reading it all and then starting to live as a Muslim submitting to the creator of the heavens and earth but we see them they are following their desires and whenever their desires and the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the commandments of Allah azza wa jal contradict they prefer their desires over the verses of Allah azza wa jal and thus they sell the hereafter while buying this worldly life at the end of the ayah number 68 86 Allah says Fa, therefore la the punishment or the torment will not be lightened for them لا يخفف عنهم العذاب it will not be lightened in that punishment جهنم the hellfire it will not be lightened for them ولا هم ينصرون nor will they be aided no one will come to them after a while and aid them and take them from the hand of Allah from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will not uh, find any helpers in many ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasize this reality that no one can do anything against Allah azza wa jal no one can oppose uh, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about them so they will be there eternally they will be in that punishment eternally and the punish the the fire will not be lightened them لا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينصرون no one will come and aid them وما هم and in many ayat in Quran Allah says وما هم بخارجين منها they are not going to be able to go out from that fire and some ayat else Allah says كلما أرادوا أن يخرجوا منها Whenever they tried uh, to emerge from that fire, to go out from that fire, كلما أرادوا أن يخرجوا منها أعيدوا فيها They will be returned there and they will not be able to escape from that fire. وما هم بخارجين منها Allah says they will not be able to go out from that fire. Eventually, they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to end them to end their being uh, to kill them and uh, they will ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to end their life they will say ya malik ud'u lana rabbaka liyaqdi alayna rabbuk qala innakum makithun Allah will say over that angel in uh, in that fire in Jahannam إِنَّكُمْ مَاكِثُونَ You will be here You will not die لا يقضى عليهم فيموتوا It will not They will not be ended uh, So they die So they will be able, able to die لا يقضى عليهم فيموتوا Allah will not get rid of them ولا يخفف عنهم من عذابها And that punishment will not be lightened for them so ayat clear that they will be eternally there خالدين فيها أبدا they will be eternal they will uh, be there and Allah will punish them there eternally فلا يخفف عنهم العذاب ولا هم ينصرون and they will not be aided and here a question raises itself whenever we read this this kind of ayat some people ask if Allah does not punish someone more than what he gained of the evil things 
than how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them eternally where the human being lives here a limited life so let Allah punish them for example 60 years or 70 years as long as he uh, gave him life uh, here in this uh, worldly life and let, not, let him not punish him more than that if Allah claims that he is uh, just but the answer is that uh, the crime it's not up to time it, it's, there is no relation between time and the crime we cannot say that a crime for the second for two seconds for three seconds someone may kill you in a second then can we say that this is a small crime or something uh, a little it's not a big because it happened in, in just a single uh, second there's no relation between uh, the time and between the crime and evil things themselves so someone may deny his creator although Allah gave him all these abilities and faculties in order to understand and realize the creator of, of this universe the heavens and the earth and whatever between them and this is very valuable faculty given to the human being think about someone who denies this faculty and then uh, denies his creator disrespect him throughout his life although Allah makes it clear for him throughout his life that he is the creator and that he is the one who gives him whatever he needs all the blessings comes to him come to him uh, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Think about that man who is uh, who insists on denying his creator. Do not want to respect him. Do not want to uh, acknowledge his very being, while he is fully aware about his oneness and about his existence. That person. Do you think that he is? Uh, he has a little crime or do you want to think this matter with the time 10 minutes one hour or 10 days there's no relation between the time and between the uh, bigness of uh, that crime this is the most biggest crime can be done by a human being but Allah gives him more time uh, and gives him the chance in order to amend himself and return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and eventually he caused him die when it appears certainly that he will not return even if he has given more times decades or decades when it, cl it becomes clear and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, then Allah uh, stops his life and takes him back and Allah said uh, as a consequence of his knowledge many people after Allah take their souls they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let them return to this life and they promised promising him that they will change their uh, behavior and they will be believers and etc but Allah says they are they do not say the truth even I if I give them that chance and return them to this life again they will continue disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will continue denying uh, their creator because that moment where Allah says okay this person will not change his uh, behavior towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change 
his uh, denying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will not respect his creator, will not return to Allah even if he has given more time, even if he has given eternal time, that moment which gives the end of that uh, human's life. So until uh, that stage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives for every person uh, a time and chance and possibility in order to believe in him and return to him and amend himself. Therefore Allah said to those who asked him a second chance, Allah said, أَوَلَمْ نَعْمِرُكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرَ Didn't we give you sufficient life, enough life for those who has that intention or who is going to return or who is going to amend himself or who is going to take the lesson, draw the lesson and return to his creator. A sufficient time for those has been given. Didn't I give you that sufficient time? If you had that intention, or if you had that, if you, if you were going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that everyone who would believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and respect him and return to him in uh, and ask his forgiveness and repentance. They all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they all find enough time in their life. And the others, they are all totally, if they had given eternal life, they would not have changed their uh, denying towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask me how Allah can examine the people in this way. Uh, how can Allah be sure about them that they, if they even had given eternal life, they would not change themselves? This is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and up to His knowledge. But we know that Allah says, we make it clear, the reality, for each human being and give him the sufficient chance and ability and uh, faculties uh, in order to respect his creator and return to him and believe in him. So if this thing uh, and this chance given to all uh, individual, uh, then there is injustice, then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala examining his creatures in the just way and this life is very careful. Uh, no need to think about Allah that He uh, wants to punish His creatures, to punish His servants, or He guides some people while uh, misguiding the others because He wants to punish them. Allah is not someone like that. He is most merciful. He is a Rahim. He is the compassionate one over uh, his uh, slaves. He invites them to his mercy throughout their life. Allah invites them to his mercy. Even Firaun, Allah invited him to believe in him and to accept the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to him through the blood messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Moses. And Allah said to Moses, be calm with him and be lenient with him uh, say the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best way explain it in the best way uh, in order to uh, may he return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَى so we cannot say that Allah is a cruel one that Allah is unjust uh, because he is, uh, his examining people is not true. Uh, that's not the case. So let's move on to the ayah number 87. And indeed, 
we did give Moses the book, meaning the Torah. وَقَفَيْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ بِالرُّسُلِ and followed up, up, followed up, after him with the messengers, many messengers after Moses, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Some we know, Allah mentioned them, and while the others we, does, we do not know, because Allah said, مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ نَقْصُصْ عَلَيْكَ Some of them we related them to you by their names and some others we didn't mention so we, we do not say that we know all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran or in Torah or in other books Allah mentioned some of them while he didn't mention the others and Isa Jesus one of those whom Allah mentioned in Quran he is a messenger of Allah after Moses, one of the messenger of Allah after Moses, وَأَتَيْنَا and we did give Jesus ابن مريم, son of Mary البينati, the clear proofs the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his signs meaning the Injil, Bible وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ and supported him بِرُوحِ القدس, with the pure Spirit. This is the angel of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to the messenger Jesus and revealed to him the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, meaning the Injil وَأَيَّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَى أَنفُسُكُمْ and we can see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naming his messenger, his angel, Jibreel alayhi salam, as a ruh, as a spirit. In uh, Surah Maryam, where Allah said, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَّا And we sent to her our spirit, فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيَّا And it turned in, uh, to a human being and to form a human being uh, so it is the messenger of Allah جل, came uh, to Mary and somewhere else Allah says we have revealed to you awhayna ilayka ruham min amrina through a spirit uh, from our commandment ma kunta tadrima al-kitab wal al-iman and over that angel you received the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma kunta tadrima al-kitab wal al-iman you wasn't knowing uh, the, what is the Iman and what is the book you were uh, ignorant about them so Allah taught you uh, the Quran and revealed you to Quran or his spirit Jibreel alayhi salam so it's clear that Allah mentioning Jibreel alayhi salam his angel as one of his spirits, as one of uh, his souls created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it does not mean that it is the spirit of Allah. We cannot say something like that because Allah is not something like us, which contains spirit and body and something like that. Uh, the spirit of Allah, meaning it is something uh, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's the result of the commandment of Allah azza wa jal. and you may see Allah said, says ruhan min amrina a ruh uh, as a consequence of our commandment that ruh happens Allah creates that soul uh, with his amr with his commandment and somewhere else the Messenger of Allah, they asked the Messenger of Allah, what is the Ruh? 
the same question came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And Allah mentioned that event, saying, They are asking you about ruh. So we should learn what is the ruh from this ayah. We should not think about that uh, and imagine that uh, through uh, our mind without any proof. We have to look what Quran says. What is the ruh? Allah says, min amri rabbi say the ruh is out of the commandment of my lord so the ruh is out of commandment of my, my lord so where allah whenever allah says my ruh my soul does not mean that the ruh of allah it's because it's out of his commandment therefore allah says my ruh as he says my servant my abd my creature my creatures it's like that my creatures and my uh, spirit or soul it means that the soul created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the spirit out of the commandment of Allah azza wa jal and you may see the same ayah in the creation of Adam where Allah said فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِي and when I create him and blow over him from my spirit then uh, prostrate yourselves before him in this ayah in the creation of Adam Allah blows uh, from his soul from his spirit and that spirit is not the spirit of Allah it's not the part that spirit is not the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's out of Allah Azza wa Jal, created by Allah Azza wa Jal, it happened uh, out of the commandment of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Ar-Ruhu min amr Rabbi. This definition should not be uh, overlooked. Ar-Ruhu min amr Rabbi. And the same thing in the creation uh, of Jesus, like the creation of Adam. In the creation of Jesus, Allah says. وَنَفَخْنَا فِيهَا مِنْ رُوحِنَا We blowed upon her, meaning Mary, uh, from our soul, from our uh, spirit. And that spirit also is uh, created by Allah. It's not the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is out of His commandment. Happened, produced out of the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal. So Allah says, وَأَيِّدْنَاهُ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ We supported him with the Ruh Al-Qudus means with the Holy Spirit means Jibreel alayhi salam the Ruh created by Allah the Almighty. أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ Then whenever a messenger came to you is not that Every time a messenger came to you, بِمَا لَا تَهْوَ أَنفُسَكُمْ With that, your souls did not desire. بِمَا لَا تَهْوَ أَنفُسَكُمْ إِسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ You were arrogant. Your response was arrogancy towards the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you received a messenger from Allah, whenever you heard the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you didn't like it. Because you are following your desires. You are not following your understanding. You are not following your reason. You are not following the truth. You are just following the desires. Whether it's not true or not, it's not important in your sight. It's not important according to you. The important thing in your understanding is your desire, the things which you like them, so you are following your desires. As Allah says in many ayat in Quran, يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ They are those who follow their desires. Therefore, they prefer this life over the hereafter. أَفَكُلَّمَا جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ بِمَا لَا تَهْوَ أَنفُسُكُمْ إِسْتَكْبَرْتُمْ You were arrogant. Then you denied that messenger. فَفَرِيقًا كَذَّبْتُمْ A party of them, the messengers, you denied, وَفَرِيقًا تَقْتُلُونَ In another party, 
you used to kill them. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين. ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا وأخطأنا. ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا. ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به. واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا. أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى. وبركاته